evening everybody or actually it's seven minutes after midnight on this now Sunday morning and I thought I'd give you a bit of a review as quickly as I can because right now my mom's in the shower and my eight-year-old nephew who are watching tonight because his parents went to the Black Oak Casino in Sonora you know he's here tonight but he's asleep so I thought I'd kind of do a bit of a review as quickly as I can because like I said my mom's in the shower and everything and and such in the next, I guess, 15 minutes as much as I can on this, the Sonic Encyclopedia. That's right. I got this in the mail. I got this via UPS um, yesterday. Let me straighten out my camera here a little bit. There we go. But yeah, I got this via UPS yesterday. <coughs> or should I say Friday? I got it. Um, what was funny is I ordered it on Thursday, um, and I thought it was delivery estimation was supposed to be for this Monday, but I think because they realized Veterans Day is today now because it's the 11th and kind of carries on carries into Monday, that it'd be best to just send it out on, you know, along with my other order which I had pre-ordered, which was the Amazing Spider-Man movie, but. You know, what can I say about this? Um, let me just say, you know, we all criticize Ian Flynn for a lot, saying a lot of things. And, you know, maybe some of us that read exactly what's in here may think he's rewritten history just to fit what he feels should be a uh, part of history. As a matter of fact, some of you could see what I'm talking about over at the Sonic Stadiums, the Sonic fo uh, Sega Forums, Cartoon Comic Section. <coughs> Sonic Stadium, a Sonic Discussion section, and under each category is Sonic Encyclopedia, is for the Sega forms in the Cartoon Comics section, and Archie's Sonic the Hedgehog in the Sonic Discussion of Sonic Stadium, the Sonic Encyclopedia in the Saturday Am forms, as well as in Saturday Morning forms, along with another one called Bunny's Parents, a question mark on it. But yeah, it's uh, you can find the pictures there, and you can go to my B BVW nineteen seventy nine BVW nineteen seventy nine uh, DeviantArt page, and you'll find some there. <laughs> but yeah, um, this definitely gives you a lot of great information on uh, on stuff th uh, that you've known about, and even that you didn't know about. I mean, the hype basically they put into this, and basically said. You know, basically the hype they put into it and the hold that they had to put on it for a while, definitely, again, you know, you can say what you want about Ian Flynn. Yes, he's done some controversial things. He may not be the best writer out there, but potential, has the potential to be a great one. But right now, in the eyes of some, is not potentially, he's not doing his best job. <coughs> uh, you have to admit that, you know, unlike all the other previous writers, if Ian Flynn did have something to do with this, because it says story confirmation and script by Ian Flynn, and yeah, they even credit Ken Penders in here. How about, how about that? They even credit Ken Penders in here, along with everybody else that's come and gone. But you got to think of it this way: even when Ken and Carl were on board, never once was it ever discussed that they were going to do something like this, and. As soon as Ian comes on board, it's almost like a year or so after he comes on board, I guess, or two, is when the discussion starts coming around that, oh, we're going to compile everything you know about the comic, all the characters and stories and info that you already know, and we're going to add, we're going to compile it together and add in stuff you didn't know or you wouldn't expect to see into this one little encyclopedia, and that's exactly uh, what they did. Yeah, that's exactly what they did. I mean, they basically give you 30 pages, 30, basically about 30 to 31 pages worth of the Mobius timeline. The Mobius timeline of when it began to the current timeline. Basically from the beginnings to the current. And they list off all the events that has taken place. You know, for example, that's how they do it, right there. They list off all the events that have taken place in between then and there, in between the beginning and the current timeline. And again, you know, they talk about a lot of things. As a matter of fact, they give Mobius 
the future or years later about one, two, three, four, three, four, five pages worth. That's pretty good. Um, they also talk about other uh, zones and everything in here, which is pretty unique. Other zones, they talk about the automations, the nanites, <coughs> the source of all. They even talk about the time stones, you know, the time stones from Blast of the Past and Sonic CD. They even talk about them in there. And they even give the name to that owl creature that was in Blast of the Past Part 1. His name is Nicholas Old Time. Nicholas Old Time. That's a, something I guess we didn't know until then, or until now. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, they talk about other worlds and dimensions, like I said. And You know how everybody assumes, that, assumes or has their own opinion that opinion on how the silver story arc in Sonic Universe was basically a lightened adaption of Other Rem. Well, you could pretty much say you could be right because instead of calling it Other Rem, he names it Dark Mobius. That's right, he calls it Dark Mobius. So there you go. So yeah, that loose adaption, as a lot of you put it, is basically of other M is basically known in the comics as Dark Mobius, if you want to look at it that way. But they talk about all the dimensions, the special zones, all the characters that you've read in the comic, like Fives, the Zordad, the Black Arms, uh, the alien planets and races. They talk about Sonic Underground and the in the imaginary world as well. They get a section. And of course, all the core Freedom Fighter group, uh, Freedom Fighters, they get a section as well. They started out actually with how they began, and then basically with one that says current, this being current. So that kind of might tell you something. That might, excuse me, that might tell you that maybe there's a chance. And of course, like I said, each Freedom Fighter gets a section that's updated up to currently. Even uh, the Chaotix get separate sections. His Knuckles, his Julie Sue. So that's pretty cool. And Julie Sue, I guess, the uh, cover her bottom hoods, the belt buckles, the answer to that. <laughs> uh, but they talk about all the other Freedom Fighter groups. They talk about the Acorn family, the Council of Acorn, Orn, and everything. They talk about the Royal Military and the Secret Service, including Hershey. Hershey, who is right there. I don't know if you can see that, but she's she's right there. The Prowler family, the Hitchhog family, get sections as well, which is pretty cool. Rosie and the Orphans, as well as Mina and the Forget-Me-Nots get sections, which is pretty cool. I really like that. The Rabbit Family. <laughs> Emily, Vanilla, and Cream. And then, of course, you got Locke, Knuckles' father is in there. And, of course, the Brotherhood. Avalon, on, oh, Avalon gets a section. Remington gets a section. Decal, Chaos, Chow. You know, they get a section. Team Dark gets a section right there it's pretty cool Rouge gets uh, a section as well and they use the artwork kind of from Sonic X and from Shadow he gets a section from his video game right there and of course up to now Team Freedom and Team Fighters both get their own section together Secret Freedom Fighters got their section <laughs> How about that? And the Substitute Legion Freedom Fighters got theirs. Monkey Kong's got a section. Monkey Kong's got a section. How about that? Uh, the Marcel, the Marseille, the Marcelin, the, uh, the Marseille Freedom Fighters get one. The Down Under Freedom Fighters get a section. And believe it or not, Barbary does get a little bit of a cover up here. I guess that kind of answers people's questions. She gets a dress now or something like that, I guess. I don't know. 
the Phantom, Phantom, the Sandblast, Jeffrey Dalsey and the Dragon Tribe get one. The Arctic Freedom Fighters get one. So that's pretty good. You know, by the way, that seal in the Arctic Freedom Fighters, if you want to know some, the Arctic Freedom Fighter, that seal, if you will, that has a French accent in the Arctic Freedom Fighters, if you guessed at first, oh, maybe it's a male and all that, nope. That seal's female. So you got two females on there. Er Irma Emin, you got the Irma and Cecilia, or whatever her name is. Lube in the wool packet section, that's cool. But yeah, they all get decent sections. The nerves get one. I mean, it just covers everything that you want to know of. It even, like I said, you know, it basically lives up to what they what they were promoting. And it talks about things and shows you things. It talks about Fiona, gives her a section in there. That's pretty cool. Trash the Devil gets one. Talk about Dr. Eggman Naga. Nega, uh, Nega gets one, Dr. Eggman Nega gets one, along with Blaze. And they talk about Burning Blaze, a super form, which is yet to make an appearance. That's pretty cool. They even have a section for those that have passed, basically the characters that died. They have a section for them. Yeah, they they got a lot of stuff here that you probably wouldn't have expected. Would have well, actually would have expected or not. They talk about both death eggs including the current one. So that's good. That's cool. The ultimate annihilator gets talked about in here. The new megaopolis gets talked about. The chaos siphon. You know. They talk about what, they ask the question of what are Mobians, they talk about Nautil Village and the Great Forest. And then the one that really stuck out in my mind, and of course they talk about Angel Island as well, but the one that stuck out in my mind was the United Federation. They talked about Station Square and sitting out Central City. They show off the characters of the United Federation, which are Mayo Bullion, General Tower, the President. And then the one that caught my, <coughs> caught my eye. The one that surprised me, kind of like when I saw Vince Russo uh, um, being interviewed for the NWO uh, DVD, the person that, the character that surprised me was in appearance as part of the United Federation, Princess Elise. That's right, Princess Elise is in there as part of the United Federation. So, but we haven't seen her in the comics, which is kind of crazy until now. So it kind of tells you that she might be coming. Who knows? But again, they talk. It basically, it's got everything you want to know. I mean, it's like basically it's all up to date up till now. It's everything up to date. Eight to what's going on currently. So. So that's pretty cool. It gives a section to the Metal Sonic series and and the Mechas as, as well. Gives a section to the Metal Sonic series and into the Metal series as well, and and this is what it says about Mecha Sonic. This is what people might say Ian has rewritten. He says had his body argumented with laser cannons. In other words, when Sonic got roboticized, he had his body modified with laser cannons, if you will, or at least his arms. But yeah, this is basically. This basically does live up to its hype, ladies and gentlemen. It's high, I highly recommend anybody that's out there to pick this up. I got this for about $10.13 off Amazon. So I highly recommend you guys picking it up. It's a great read. It lives up to its hype, despite how you feel about certain people who helped it out, who helped make it. And that's all I could say. It's definitely worth reading, getting, and for any Sonic fan and Sonic comic book fan, and that's all I'm going to say. Comment and video response down below. I'll talk to you all later.